All right, so I thought I'd make a video on how to make Windows 11 better. Um, since Windows 10 is becoming end of life later this year, there's going to be a lot more people switching to Windows 11, which, by the way, that doesn't mean you need to switch to Windows 11. If you really like Windows 10, uh, you can activate the extended security updates uh, with TS Forge on uh, Mass Gravel. So keep that in mind. I'm going to first go over a couple of good performance changes that Windows 11 has. Um, so the first biggest one is throttling the background listeners to 125 hertz for your mouse. Basically, um, the 1000 hertz is going to be divided by 8, which is going to give you 125 hertz for anything in the background that would be listening to uh, your pulling rate. If you have something more than a thousand, it's just going to take that in a thousand hertz chunks and then divide those by eight. Um, so this will help a lot in terms of just the smoothness of your mouse since you don't have lots of other apps that are um, basically getting a thousand hertz um, interrupts essentially. So the other change I'm going to touch on, which it should be applied to Windows 10 as well, um, but I see some things where people say, like, this registry key is for Windows 11, um, which I'm not sure if they're saying that it only works on Windows 11 or uh, what the deal is with that. But anyways, um, this is a good change nonetheless. So time resolution essentially tells the app uh, how long it should be in the ready queue before it's put back on the thread. So by default, Windows has the, uh, the process will wait anywhere from one millisecond to, you know, 15 milliseconds. So it could be anywhere in between that range. So most apps like Chrome, Discord, games, they will call for a sleep of one millisecond, meaning that Ideally, it's only in the ready queue for one mil millisecond. You may notice that it could be a little bit longer than this, which is due to other things causing that, um, but I'm not going to touch on that here. So essentially, this change is making it so that the sleep precision is on a per app basis and not a global scale. Before, um, if an app was calling sleep one, so one millisecond, then all apps would also be sleeping for one millisecond. This doesn't really make sense because if you have a background app that, you know, it only needs to sleep for, you know, let's say like here in this example, um, it's only waiting, it's like 64 times a second. But since the some app is calling sleep one, now it's waking up 500 times which doesn't really make sense if you don't need an app that is coming on and off the thread that much. So having this on a per app basis definitely helps in terms of performance, very slightly, of course, but it does help. So I think a lot of people don't understand that that's a good change, and they're applying this registry key, which is getting rid of that feature. So now anything that's calling uh, sleep one that's making everything else sleep one millisecond, which is completely useless um, if you don't need an app uh, sleeping for that short amount of time. So just keep that in mind when you're applying this registry key. All right, so I'm gonna go over some nice tweaks you can make to Windows 11 um, just to make your life a little bit better. So obviously using my tool here, uh, the first one I'm gonna go over is getting the Windows 10 File Explorer back. Uh, you don't need any third-party third apps for this. Um, if we just select Enable Windows 10 File Explorer, this will only change sort of this top section. But if we come into here and also restore the Windows 10 icons, that will completely bring it back to how it looked. So it's going to restart a few times there. And you can see now we have pretty much the Windows 10 File Explorer here. All right, so the next one is gonna be hiding the uh, Start Menu Recommended section. 
I believe in a new update they're going to be adding a way that you can um, hide this like without having to do any tricks. But um, yeah, essentially I have it here in my tool. And that's just going to hide the whole section, including the text. So the next stuff I'm going to go over is just a couple of Windows 10 things you can restore. Um, so you can get Notepad back, um, Task Manager, um, obviously Stimping Tool and Recycle Bin icon too. Uh, but I'll just do these two. Right, so if you did the Windows 10 uh, Task Manager, it's going to be it's going to work the best if you uh, disable UAC because this needs a uh, admin rights to launch. Um, so if we just come into here change the mode to run selected tweaks and disable UAC. Now when you launch it, you won't get the, the pop-up. It'll just open right away. And then here's the Windows 10 notepad. All right, so the next one I'm gonna talk about is improving the uh, UWP settings app here. Um, it's kind of trash, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of just unneeded stuff in here. So like all these like cards and stuff up here. Um, usually there's like more stuff, but on this virtual machine, it's a little cleaner. But anyways, we can get rid of some of that stuff. So just click hide ads and settings. So now when we go in there, it'll just show the network and it won't have that stupid Microsoft thing there. All right, so the next change we're gonna make is show all taskbar tray icons. Um, obviously you can do this with a simple registry key that just enables them, but if you install a new app, you'll notice that um, it won't automatically get checked here. So if you go to here if you add a new app it's going to be off by default so essentially this applies a very simple uh, startup script here update task tray icons so this will run when you start up so if you install a new app it'll automatically enable it here and if you manually disable one so let's say let's say i don't want task manager showing there then it will know that you manually disable this and it won't re-enable it again. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about is making these um, pinned icons have no text under them. Ignore VS Code, I don't know why it's bugged, but it still shows the text. Um, anyways, so these are just shortcuts essentially, and you can replace the name of them with an empty character and um, have them look like this. So if we just go to run, they're either gonna be in the program data or app data. So if we go to program data, I'll drag this over. We go to Microsoft, and then we go to Windows and start menu programs. Um, you'll see they're them right here. Sometimes they'll be like in a folder, uh, but you can always just take them out of the folder and put them here in the root. So if you come into character map, you can pretty much use like any, um, any font, it doesn't really matter, but you just wanna look for an empty character. So there's one right here, if we do select and copy, now we can uh, rename these and just paste that in and it will make these blank. I think it looks a little bit cleaner this way. So something else I wanna touch on is a lot of people seem to think that Windows 11 somehow has worse performance than Windows 10. Um, that's just not the case. If you have it set up correctly, it's exactly the same. If not, Windows 11 being slightly better with some of those background changes that I've talked about already. Um, the problem is Windows 11 has a lot more increased security in terms of Defender. Um, and so any security feature is, is going to tank performance a little bit, or sometimes a lot in this case. Um, so Defender is a lot more aggressive on Windows 11. So if you're not a complete idiot, you should disable Defender. 
it's really not a gr it's not a great antivirus to be honest. There's a lot better third party antiviruses out there. Um, so you can easily disable Windows Defender or even strip it out um, with my tools here. So just keep that in mind. If if you want the most performance out of Windows 11, you should be at least disabling Defender or just completely removing it, as I've done because I don't need an antivirus. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have.